People are not appreciating how impactful Erika is to the plot of Ghostwire Tokyo. I am here to tell you that if Erika didn't do certain things, Akito would have died in the motorcycle accident, Rinko would have not died, and the vanishing wouldn't have happened. Yes, I believe the vanishing is Erika's fault. Welcome to Ghostwire Breakdown. In order to properly present my case as to why Erika kickstarted the whole fiasco of the vanishing, we need to first learn the whole story of Erika and how she died. Most people would miss this aspect of the story because the information about Erika is scattered all over the place. But that's why I'm here. Everything starts with her family. Erika is the daughter of an unnamed scientist that we later knew as Hania. Erika's mother died from a disease which ignited all the craziness in her family. My wife's condition is not good. Does death always arrive so suddenly? Her father couldn't accept his wife's death and it drove him mad, like literal mad scientist stuff. <laughs> yes, of course. Her soul hasn't turned into nothing. It has simply left her body. But where to? Where did it go? I can save her. I can do it. He started tinkering on ways to bring back the dead. And although Erika didn't know that her father wants to revive her mom, he must have sensed that something is wrong with her father. Because during these moments, Erika started detaching herself from her father, and she found refuge in Rinko's team, which consists of her, Ed, and KK. We learned this in the prelude of the game. Fast forward a few months, Rinko's team started monitoring Erika's father because of his suspicious activity with regards to supernatural stuff. They didn't know he was trying to revive his wife, they just know that he is experimenting on something that causes people to mysteriously disappear through some dark fog. Rinko doesn't allow Erika to participate in the fieldwork that they're doing to fight against Hanya's action. And rightfully so, because Erika is still 16 years old at this time. However, this left a sour feeling of uselessness in Erika which we hear in the background while we're fighting her as that cat monster. I get it, Erika. I really do. But I just can't make that call. I can't. I just wanted to fight. No one understands. Just a burden. Always being protected. You should stay here. It'll be safer that way. No, this is wrong. It's wrong! Rinko's team spent months setting up a plan to take down Hanya. All the while, Erika is just there, watching them and not being able to do anything. Just like what she said, she's literally just like a cat in there, useless and insignificant in contrast to the weight of what the team is doing. I was just like a cat, sitting around, being taken care of. Until she couldn't take it any longer, and she decided to take action. Having affinity with Ether, Erika sought KK to teach her how to control it so that she can fight alongside them as well. KK accepted and so they started training without the knowledge of Rinko because they knew she wouldn't allow it. She's very protective of Erika. They kept this training for a few weeks I assume up until the moment when the plan to take down Hanya arrived. We have no idea what exactly the plan is but if I understood correctly and I know I am right because I never make mistakes. The plan involves Ed and Dale providing support from outside Shibuya while KK and Rinko take Hanya head on. I believe the plan is set up this way because they knew that Hanya is trying to lock down Shibuya in some way. They might not know how exactly, but they knew something is up. This is the reason why they created the STD. Weird abbreviation, I know. They knew that they would need to rescue souls and not physical body. Anyway, the problem happened in the middle of this operation. Erika wants to join KK and Rinko fight her father, but Rinko wouldn't allow it. I get it, Erika. I really do. But I just can't make that call. I think Rinko's argument is that Erika shouldn't feel responsible for what her father is doing. But as I've mentioned earlier, she just wanted to do something. She didn't want to feel useless. She came to me one day, wanted to learn how to fight. So, I found a place where I could teach her. She never told me. I guess she knew I'd object. She kept saying that she wanted to fight alongside us. She just wanted to help us, to be useful. In the end, Erika walked out on them, and this prompted Rinko to go after her and leave KK to fight Hanya first. I'm going after her. You two get 
of Shibuya like we planned. Erica wasn't here either. I hate to do this, but we're getting out of Shibuya while we can. Dale and I can't afford to die here. We must stick to the plan. Let me report my status. Only Dale and I managed to escape Shibuya as originally planned. We were separated from the others at the parking lot near Jesus Street. Rinko probably thought that she will just fetch Erica real quick and then follow KK afterward. But as we all know, Hanya killed KK and Rinko failed to find Erica. Here it is assumed that Erica went to fight her father, probably expecting KK to be there. The only possibility I can think of is that she went to confront her dad and died. And so she got killed by her father as well. And she was used to even further his plans. Special credit must be given to my daughter. This barrier would not exist were it not for her. And when Rinko went after KK as planned, she also got killed. Hanya, having free reign to execute his plans, started the vanishing, which is just a larger scale of what he's already doing during the prelude. During this moment, KK found Akito and brought him back from the brink of death. Rinko resumed her search for Erika, and Erika, turned into a faceless by her father, sucked Rinko to impersonate her to try and stop Akito and KK. So really, if Erika listened to Rinko and stayed put, Hanya wouldn't have been able to further power up his plans, KK and Rinko would have been together in confronting Hanya, which will drastically increase their chance of success, and they might have been able to prevent the vanishing from happening. And that is how Erika indirectly caused the vanishing. What do you think of this breakdown? Did I miss a detail or something? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Oh, and by the way, I think Hanya and the vanishing are referencing a real-life cult called Amma Shinrikyo. I highly suggest that you watch this video. Thanks for sticking to the end. Bye for now. Bless up.